Okay, so before we do this, um, let me, uh, over here on the side, since you guys asked, you guys wanted to know um, what the, uh, how to find the integral of secant. And um, <coughs> it's in your book in section 7.3, towards the end. It involves doing some funny business. Um, so what you do, and th nothing tells you to really do this, but you do it anyways. Um, you let u equal to secant plus tangent. Yeah, so there's nothing to tell you. It's, it's what is called, what the book calls a clever substitution. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you want to be clever, uh, you let u equal to secant plus tangent. Okay, so then what would du equal to? Yeah. Hmm? Secant x, tangent x, plus secant squared, plus secant squared x, yeah. dx. Okay, and then if you take a look at this expression, what kind of algebra things can you do to it? No. So you can factor out a secant. Okay, so if I factor out a secant, what will I have left over inside? U. Tangent. Okay. Tangent plus secant, which is equal to U, right? So like this right here, well in the parentheses, that's U. And I have DU. So DU is equal to secant X times U times DX. And so if you divide by U, on the left side, you'll get du over u. On the right side, what will I get? Secant x dx. Secant x. And then dx. dx. And then notice then that yeah. secant x dx is equal to du over u when u is secant x plus tan x. So that means that this integral is equal to the integral of du over, du over u. Could you explain that last part again? Yeah, all we did is we divide by u both sides. Because this is u, right? It's tangent plus secant. Oh, okay. So we just divide both sides by u. And so then we just get du over u equals to secant x dx. Okay. And so what's the integral of that? ln absolute value of u plus c, right? Which is ln of secant x plus tangent x. Mm. Clever, right? But, but, well, one of the problems. It, just, <laughs> it is not satisfying. Basically, basically, you found the integral of secant x plus tangent x, not. No. No, we just, we, we, we did a substitution so that when you, um, when you find du, you get that exactly what you're looking for, the secant x dx, the inner, that is equal to du over u with that specific substitution. Okay. But we weren't expected to know how to do that on our own. No, no. it's, yeah, I mean, there's nothing that tells you, oh, I should do that you can take a plus tangent. Yeah. Okay, so if this be no knowledge now that if you give me the integral of secant x dx, I can just put equals ln secant x plus tan x. Uh, yeah, I would say this, that's a good one to, to remember. Yeah. At, at, I mean, at the very least, you know, let's say hypothetically you forget or something, uh, you should just remember that, you know, the substitution, the final substitution. Um, the one for cosecant is similar, and I think it's on your homework. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it essentially the same thing? Um, yes, except that the, the substitution is different. It's not secant plus tangent. It's like cosecant minus cotangent. Yeah. Or cotangent minus cotangent. Mm -hmm. One of the two. Seven, three. Seven, three. I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it's the last word. So if you gave us on the test and we just wrote, I don't know, secant x plus tan x plus c. Uh, we just, we get it right. Yeah, that's fine. Yes. Because I'm yeah. not going to ask you. So that's not very many steps. I mean, I would expect you to either know it or know how to find it. So when the grader takes off for us not showing our work. I bet the grader, what? by the way. Nice person. <laughs> <laughs> <Very nice. laughs> sure did.
<laughs> she's one of the uh, four out of five people in the tutoring lab that couldn't do any of our homework last night. Yeah, she could probably do the homework. No, she couldn't. Oh, she couldn't. <laughs> the only thing and to do is, I think his name's Chris. Okay. Wait, she couldn't do it, but she's grading for. She your... couldn't do it. Well, when you have an answer key, it's pretty easy. <laughs> grading gets like phenomenally easy when you have the answer running. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. Zero out of a two. She has her fingers to move. <coughs> okay. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. Um, any hoot. All right, so you guys remember um, this formula that we derived uh, back when we were doing substitution? Yeah. We don't, not like, oh, do you remember it, have it memorized in your brain, but do you kind of vaguely remember uh, finding integrals of this form and uh, deriving formulas like that? Taking the out. Yeah, that, right? Okay. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to sort of generalize that. And because notice, remember that, um, let me write them down, I guess. Um, you know, we are able to find, using this same kind of idea, we can find integrals when we have 1 over the square root of a squared minus x squared, right? What does that one look like? You guys remember? Like a number minus x squared inside the root? You'd use an inverse sign, right? And then there was inverse secant, which looked kind of like that. OK, so you know, but we're restricted to those three forms. So uh, trigonometric substitution allows you to find integrals that have those forms and then um, a lot of sort of related forms that, that look similar to that. So, so what I want to do first is we, I want to derive um, the same the same formula that we derived before, this one. But uh, we're going to use um, trigonometric substitution so you guys can get an idea of what it looks like and, um, and how it works. So the idea is this. You go, OK, so you're going to um, use a uh, substitution. But it's going to be a different kind of substitution. You're going to let x equal to a tangent theta. OK. So if x is equal to a tangent theta, then what is dx equal to? Tangent theta? A, a times secant squared. Secant, squared. secant squared theta, right? d theta? Right, it's just a derivative of, of uh, this, right? You know, so it's the same idea as when you're doing regular substitution. Um, you're just getting the derivative of, of x with respect to theta, and then you move the t theta over. So really no, no different. Uh, but then what you do is you go back in and you plug these two into your integral. So we're, we're going to substitute in x. We're going to plug in a tangent theta. And then instead of dx, we'll plug in a secant squared theta d theta. So we're changing everything into theta. So we've got, um, so here this is, oh, whoops, I should have done blue. OK, so this is dx, right? So let's write this down. So this is 1 over. So dx is, um, I'll just write it down up here. So a secant squared theta d theta. And then on the bottom, it's x squared plus a squared. So um, let's do, well, let's write it out. So x squared is this one squared, right? So then I would have a squared tangent squared theta plus a squared, right? Does that make sense? So I just, x squared is just this one squared, right? I just plug it in. And then, do you guys notice any kind of simplifications we can do? Yeah, from the bottom, right, we can take out an a. So be careful, make sure you don't cross out the a's right there, because you have a sum on the bottom. But you can factor out an a squared from the denominator, right? And what would you have left over? Tangent squared theta plus 1. 
And then on top I have a secant squared theta d theta. Okay, so now what can I do? Okay, so one of the a's goes away. Uh, is it what? Or are you going to say? Yeah, no, that's good. So they're about tangent squared plus one, right? What is that? Mm -hmm. Yep. That is exactly right. Tangent squared theta plus one is equal to secant squared theta, right? So then what, what is that equal to? So this is the integral of, so I have secant squared theta over secant squared theta. Well, that's just, that's just the number one, right? One d theta over a. <coughs> okay. And, oh, that's no good. Okay, we'll <coughs> pretend that never happened. Um, and then what is that equal to? And then 1 over a. Because you turn it to a. Is a a constant? What is a? What is a? A is a constant. That is correct. So it's just 1 over a. So it's 1 over a times? X. Theta. Theta, right? Or 1 over a times a times 1. No, be careful. Because it's theta is my variable, right? So I'm integrating with respect to theta. So this is just 1 over a. That basically, it's a constant. So you just take it outside, right? We can write it out here, actually, if you wanted to. So we can write 1 over a on the outside. So now it's integral of 1. Right, which is yeah. this. So you know it's like 1x. Right. Yeah, George? Uh, how do you know to use x equals a tan theta, though, and dx? That is an excellent question, and we will address it in a moment. <laughs> but, uh, but OK, let, let's finish this off. So we get 1 over a theta plus c, right? Okay, so what is the problem with being done at this point in time? Are we done? No, we gotta put you back in. Thank you. We have to go back to the original variable, right? Because I have the answer in terms of theta, but I don't want it in terms of theta. We need to go back. Do we solve for 1 over tangent, inverse tangent x? Okay, so we want to go back to original variable. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go, okay, so, um, all right, so since um, x equals to a tangent theta, that implies that theta is equal to what? Tan of x over a. A, 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 a,
Hmm. Can you plug in what value? Um, For this specific one that you already knew? Yeah. Oh, this specific one, yeah. Uh, you are better off Using remembering that because it pops up a lot. Okay. It'll continue to pop up a lot. So, uh, but the whole point of trigonometric substitution is not to do this problem, it's to extend it to other integrals. But the idea is there. So, remember, so, okay, before I, I tell you how you know what to substitute, let's go back and see what we did. First thing we did is we um, did the substitution, right? And then you found, um, so first you substitute, right? Uh, and then the uh, next thing you did is you uh, plugged it in, right? So you plug in and you evaluate the integral. And then what was the last thing you did? We went back for, to the original variable. Right? So those are the, the basic steps. You do the substitution, which I haven't told you guys how you know what to do, uh, but I will. And then uh, you plug it in, find the integral with all the trig functions in it, using the stuff that we've learned. And then the last thing is you then go back to the original uh, variable. Thumbs up for the idea? Yes? Yes, Brian. Why, why couldn't you put like u equals, like factor out the a? And then right, yes, that's what we did originally. Um, and one wonders why such a thing is even necessary. But you will see. OK. Because that's for this problem. I just wanted to give you guys a familiar problem so that you can see the idea. But you can't use that idea all the time. So um, all right, so there are three substitutions. And the reason why you use these substitutions, like these specific ones, is because um, when you substitute them, then you can use a trig identity to put it in the form that you need it to be. So like the one we just did, a tangent theta is the only one that would work because then notice when we plugged it in, we got tangent squared plus 1, which turned into secant squared. So if you would have used a different one, it wouldn't have worked out. So um, all right, so let's write them out. So if we have um, something in the form x squared plus a squared, then uh, you use uh, x equal to a tangent theta. If you have, let's see, a squared minus x squared, then you use a sine theta. And last but not least, if you have x squared minus a squared, then you use x equal to a secant theta. And that's it. So the reason why you, you do it this way is because, so just for now, pretend that a is just a 1. If you have a minus x squared, so if you have, imagine the a is 1. 1 minus sine squared, what is that equal to? 1 minus sine squared is? Cosine squared. Cosine squared, right? So you can change that to a, uh, a trig function. If you have this one, if you think of the last one, you would have secant squared minus 1. What is that equal to? Secant squared minus 1 is tangent squared. squared. So you can change that. So that's the idea, is that the reason why you use these substitutions is because when you plug in those specific trig functions, you can switch it into another one. And then you should be able to evaluate the integral with just the trig functions. It tells you to use trigonometric substitution while it's if it's one, if it has one of those three forms, then trig substitution is definitely going to work. Um, and it does, right? You have this square root of x squared minus 9, which means that, what, what case is it out of these three? The third one. Well. Yes. 
Yes, but uh, we don't have time to do the one that I did in my other class. I did this one with x squared, but we don't have time to do that one. So we're just pretending that you wouldn't be able to use something else. Yeah. Well, what we can do is we'll do it with trigonometric. We'll do it with trigonometric substitution, and then you can do it with regular substitution later for fun, and then you can compare. They should be the same. No. Okay, that's the plan. <coughs> but you're right. Doing this one would be much easier using regular substitution. But you can't always use regular substitution. So we'll pretend for now. Um, okay, so um, now I'll ask again. Which one of the three cases is, what, what do we use? First, second, and third. Third. Third, right? Because it's x squared minus a number. So, okay, so then what would I let x equal to? So let x equal to 3 secant theta, right? Okay. So, ooh. All right. So let x equal to 3 secant theta, and then <coughs> dx is equal to, what is dx equal to? Three secant theta tangent theta d theta, and then usually it's easier to um, if you have the uh, the x squared minus a squared, so the root part. It's easier to do that from the beginning and then just plug it in. So I'm going to do um, let's see the square root of x squared minus nine because usually it requires a, a few steps. So that's equal to the square root of, what would that be? If I plug in x, it's 3 secant theta, I would get 4 9 secant squared theta. Okay, so this is 9 secant squared theta minus 9. And if I simplify this, this is equal to, <coughs> I can factor out a 9, right? 9 secant squared theta minus 1, which is equal to, what can I do with that 9? Take it out, right? I can take it out, and this is 3 square root of, what is secant squared theta minus 1? It's tangent squared. So this is why we do this on the side, because it's quite a few steps. And what is that equal to? 3 tangent theta. Okay, so questions so far? Are we doing pretty good? So we substitute our x, we find dx, and we find the, um, the, the root part, we simplify it as much as we can. So now everything is, uh, we just have a bunch of trig functions, right? So then we plug everything back in. So then we get that um, the integral of x square root of x squared minus 9 dx is equal to, um, so x, which is 3 secant theta, right? So that's the first x. And then the square root of x squared minus 9, that's equal to 3 tangent theta. So this is times 3 tangent theta, and then times dx, which is 3 secant theta tangent theta. 3 secant theta tangent theta d theta. OK, so no. What do I do? What do I do? <coughs> well, I simplify, right? So what's, what do all the numbers multiply to? Because it's just a bunch of trig functions multiplied together, right? So what, how many? 27, right? 27 times the integral of? So I have two secants and two tangents, right? So this is just tangent squared theta times secant squared theta d. 
Dice. Okay. Now what? Is this an easy one or a difficult one? This one's not bad, right? <coughs> In my other class, we had a secant cube, which made it way harder, like 20 million times harder. This one is easy. Do you guys want me to put both up? I'll put both up. You guys can look at it <coughs> for fun later. While you're, it's supposed to rain this weekend again. So, um, how do I find this integral? What would I use? Use uh, substitution. Okay, so. We would let, uh, so let u equal to, let u equal to what? Tangent, yep. Let u equal to tangent theta. Then um, du is equal to secant squared theta, d theta. So, um, 27 times the integral of tangent squared theta, secant squared theta, d theta is equal to 27 times the integral of, what does it turn into? u squared d u, right? So this is u is tangent, this is u squared, and then D u is secant squared theta. So what is this equal to? What is it equal to? The integral? So it's it's equal to u cubed over three, but then when you multiply it times the twenty seven you get u cubed over 9, right? And then u is equal to? Why would you be over 9? It would be 9 times. Oh, just making sure if you guys are paying attention. <laughs> <coughs> just making sure you guys are paying. Oh, my goodness. Now that's cool. Oh. <laughs> what in the world? Oh, this messed up my whole shindig here. Nine tangent theta. Okay. Um, nine tangent cube. Okay, so that's not bad, right? So um, that's the integral. So this is equal to um, so. So this is what I get from from this, right? So this is equal to <coughs> nine tangent cubed theta plus c, right? Okay, then am I done? No, no because I have to go back to the original variable, right? Which is x. Okay. So um, notice that it's a little bit different than the one we we did before, right? Because we in the last one we ended up with just theta. This time we ended up with a trig function. Um, so uh, let's. So this is what you do when you want to go back. So remember, actually, let's write it down so we don't forget. So then, I, uh, da -da 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 -da. so this is just a little note to self so that we don't forget what we're doing. We're going to go back to the original original variable. Okay. Um, so so let's recall what was the substitu substitution that we did? X equal to three secant theta. So this means that x over 3 is equal to secant theta, right? Okay, so what you do is since what we're looking for is tangent theta, then what you do is you make a right triangle. You go, okay, so I can make a little right triangle here. 
with theta here, and I can label the right triangle based on what um, secant is equal to. So on a right triangle, what is secant? How is secant defined? Secant is okay. Okay. Uh -oh. hypotenuse over adjacent, right? Okay, so that means that the hypotenuse would have to equal to, if secant theta is equal to x over 3, and secant theta is hypotenuse over adjacent, then that means the hypotenuse has to equal to x, adjacent side has to equal to 3, and by the Pythagorean theorem, the <coughs> opposite side has to equal to square root of x squared minus Nine, right? Does that make sense? Okay, so what this means is that um, tangent theta is equal to based on the right triangle square root of x squared minus nine over three, right? Opposite over adjacent. So this, square root of x squared minus 9 over 3, that's what we're going to plug into the tangent theta over there. Does that make sense? How we use the right triangle to find the x, extra trig function? OK, so then we've got, um, why don't we just finish it off right here since we've got it up. So this is equal to 9. And then instead of tangent cubed, we're going to do the square root of x squared minus 9 over 3 cubed, and then plus c. That's it. What do you guys think? <coughs> Yes, U substitution would be the better choice for sure on this one. I agree, 100%. <coughs> but you can't always use U substitution. In my other class, we did the same thing, but it was x squared, and it turns into a colossal mess. But I'll put both up so you guys can play. Um, so any questions about any, any part of this? So um, let's just recap real quick what we did. The first step is to do the, the proper substitution, right? Based on whatever form you have, you, uh, you do the, the substitution that you need, right? Whichever one of those that you have. You find x dx and then the, um, the I would say the root part of your book says that it requires the root to be there. But in reality, you don't really have to have the root there. So, um, but um, so you simplify that part and you turn everything into a trig function and then the second step is right here right Ooh. where you evaluate the integral so you evaluate the integral with all the trig functions and then you get um, your, your integral when you evaluate Evaluate it, you get it in terms of theta. And then the last step is to go back to the original variable using probably a right triangle most of the time um, to find the, the remaining trig functions that you need. Yeah? What do you guys think? And ta da, that's it. If you did a uh, trig, or not trig, um, if you did um, substitution, it wouldn't look like this, right? But it would look, um, you would get x squared minus 9 to the, if I have the square root and it's raised to the third, what's the exponent there? Three halves. Three halves. And then this would be over 9, right? <coughs> or 3, sorry. Okay, so right away you notice that you... You know, you wouldn't be able to use the, you know, factor out the A and do all that kind of stuff like we did. Um, 
because this isn't even a fraction, right? So, um, okay, so then you go, all right, so I, you recognize it. The main thing that tells you to um, use trigonometric substitution is because it's one of those uh, three forms. So, you know, an x squared minus a number, or x squared plus a number, or a number minus x squared. Um, so, we'll, what's going to be the substitution that we're going to use? Which one? A secant theta, right? Because it's x squared minus my number. Okay, so x is going to equal to. What's my number in front? Three, right? Three secant theta, because that's the square root of uh, the number that I have. Does that make sense? <coughs> okay, so then I find dx, which is. What's the derivative? 3 secant theta, tangent theta, d theta. And then um, usually it's, it's helpful to do the, uh, the square root part, or the, you know, the whatever um, you're substituting. In this case, the square root of x squared minus 9. It's good to kind of do it on the side so you can then just go in and, and plug it in. So if I want to find the square root of x squared minus 9, this would be the square root of, uh, what would that be? x squared, which is 9 secant squared theta minus 9, which is equal to 3 secant minus root. So you factor out a 9 from the from uh, the inside, right? But then when you get the square root of that, it comes out as a 3, right? And then you get square root of secant squared theta minus 1, which is actually tangent squared, right? Do we have to worry about the plus or minus 3? No, because this is positive square root. So the square root from the beginning was positive. Um, so this is equal to 3, that's going to be just tangent theta, right? Because inside it's tangent squared, so you get the square root and that's tangent, right? Okay, so any questions so far? How are you guys doing? You guys good? So you, you divided 3 out to get 6 squared minus 1, did you? Okay. Um, no, we factored it out from the... Um, from the radical. So it looked like this. Right? Uh, okay. And then we got the square root of nine. Square root of this, the nine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so let's see here. So this is equal to the integral. So then we just plug everything in, right? Okay, so x squared, what is that? Okay, so this is 9 secant squared theta. The, uh, the square root of x squared minus 9, that's equal to 3 tangent theta, right? So I'm going to do times 3 tangent theta. And then uh, last but not least, hmm, dx is 3 secant theta tangent theta d theta. Okay. And so then I have to find this this uh, integral. So what is this equal to? Integral of if I combine all the all the integrals. So this is eighty one, right? All the numbers, nine times three times three. Um, how many tangents? Two. So tangent squared theta, secant cube theta, d theta. Um, and what do I do here? Can you do a substitution of Is this my easy case or my difficult case? Difficult. 
What would I do? You guys remember what my requirements were? Can I do the, the first one where I break off a secant squared with that one? It's a harder one, right? Yeah. Unfortunately. Okay, so what do we do? That looks like a good title. You break off a secant tangent and then you make something new, right? That's if um, tangent is odd. Then you can break off a secant tangent. Um, with this one, you can. The only thing we can really do here um, is to. Uh, well, you can do integration by parts, but that would be take a very long time. At this point, probably the best thing to do is turn everything into secants and then just use a reduction formula. That's going to be our best bet. Is that what to do in the hard case? Yeah. Is that what we would have done yesterday? Uh, yeah, because we didn't have enough time. I did. It's on the video because I recorded the other class I didn't talk about. But that is what you do. You just use the reduction formula. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say that you used to use both secant x and then to use both secant x and x. Yeah, but you end up with an extra um, with an extra tangent that you can't do anything with. Wait, so how do we turn it all into tangents? No, you turn it all into secants. Because tangent is the one that has an even power, so you can change that one into secants. Right? So this one is, so tangent squared is equal to secant squared minus 1, right? Okay, so then this is equal to um, 81. 81 times the integral of, um, if I distribute the secant cubed inside of here, what would I get? Secant to the fifth theta minus cube theta. And maybe what we should do is split this up into two integrals, kind of like what we did last time. Because what's well, going to be the, our best strategy if we're going to use reduction formulas? Do the reduction formula on secant to the fifth, right? And then the one that we get, we're going to get a secant to the third, and we can combine it with that secant to the third. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right, so you guys have your reduction formulas on hand? Can you queue up a little bit? Can I what? This is your notes queue up a little Go up? Okay, so we've got 81. Um, so let's use the reduction formula for secant to the fifth. So what is that equal to? Can we, can we just do a reduction formula for secant? Oh, we didn't do it. No, just No, but it's in your book. I don't know. You should be able to derive them, though. Of course. But we're not going to derive it right now. <laughs> we don't have the time. Yeah, we don't have the time to derive the formula for secant at this point in time. They don't all end up like this. Most of the time, they don't actually. Yeah, well, we like if we use like a reduction formula, we don't have to prove it every time, right? No. Plug stuff in. We can just like if we have like say say on a test, if you just give us like this problem, like eighty one or just tangent squared secant to the third, and so the, my strategy would be to use the reduction formula. <coughs> I would, okay, so I would say that um, you should only use reduction formulas if absolutely necessary, like here. Okay. If you don't need to, then you should just stay away. Because as you can see, it's annoying to have to look them up every single time. So on a test, would I be required to know the reduction formula? No. But well, you should know how to do them without reduction formulas if you can. 
Does that so make sense? Ways to identify using the reduction formula would be like if it's like if you could split them up and yeah, how would you know when to use If if it's any of the ones that we've done without it, then you don't need it. And if it isn't, then you have to. So this is like our last resort? Yes. Okay. That is exactly right. Okay, so this is the reduction formula. Uh, minus, oh shoot. Oh no, okay. Plus the integral, oh. no. M minus two over M minus one integral. Oh. Hold on. Uno momento. Okay. Oh, it's terrible. Okay, that's the reduction formula. I don't even know. Okay, all right, so let's plug it in. So we get, so this secant to the fifth is um, tangent x times secant to the, to the what? Third. Third x over <coughs> four, right? Plus. Is it tangent theta? Well, oh, yes, thank you. Theta. Three over four. Okay. Plus, ooh, let's do this. All right, you guys ready? Yeah. Okay. Plus, so m, um, m minus two over m minus one, right? So this is plus three fourths, right? The integral of secant to the third, which our plan is to combine it with this integral of secant to the third. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So if I have three-fourths the integral of secant to the third minus one integral of secant to the third, I have? Minus one-fourth. Yes, that is correct. Minus one-fourth secant to the third, theta, d theta. Okay, and then I use the reduction formula again, right? So I have 81. Tangent theta, secant cube theta. I will say that this is one of the not so good ones, so I wasn't, you know, these things happen sometimes. Okay, <clears throat> all right. So we use the reduction formula again on secant to the third. So I have, George, were you going to ask a question? Me? Or no, it wasn't you. Oh. Or somebody. Me. Oh, okay. Are we going to need to... Memorize the tangent no. formula, tangent secant theta. No. <laughs> tangent secant theta divided by two. Tangent theta secant theta <laughs> over, over 3 minus 1, which is 2, right? Plus. Okay. Plus. Yeah, one Plus. half. Okay, so one half the integral of just secant, right? Do you guys agree? One half the integral of secant theta, yes. which is, we just found it earlier, one half, what's the integral of secant theta? Ln of ln of tangent theta plus cosine. Yep, ln of secant theta plus tangent theta. Okay. <laughs> the fun thing is we're not even done. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> because everything is in terms of theta. So <laughs> Okay. All right. So now the question is All right, you guys ready to finish it off? We have we have 5 minutes to finish it off. Okay. So let's go back. So we have all that stuff. That's our integral, right? This. This. Oh. Okay, so check this out. 
Um, <laughs> okay, what we need to do is um, use this x equals to 3 secant theta business. Okay, so x equals 3 secant theta. <clears throat> okay, so this means that... Um, okay, let's write this down over here. Um, so, well, no, let's not. Okay, so um, x over 3. Okay, x over 3 equals to secant theta, yes? Okay, what we need though is we need to find tangent because we know what secant theta is. That's easy, but we need to find tangent. So what you do, the easiest thing to do is to put down a right triangle, plop down theta, and so since secant theta is equal to x over 3, this means that um, the, uh, so secant, what's the definition of secant on the right triangle? Hypotenuse over adjacent. So that means that the hypotenuse has to equal to x, adjacent has to equal to 3, and by the Pythagorean theorem, the side opposite is equal to the square root of x squared minus 9, right? So then what is tangent going to equal to? Based off of this root, this root right over 3? Does that make sense? Okay, so that's what you use. So that means that, um, okay, so we're going to use this. So then that means that this is equal to 81 uh, times tangent theta, which is <coughs> square root of x squared minus 9 over 3 times secant cubed secant theta is x over 3, so this is going to be x over 3 cubed all over 4, right? So I just plugged it in right here. Minus 1 fourth. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, and then times tangent theta, which is square root of x squared Square root of, whoa, wrong color there. What happened to the tangent theta in the first term? It's square root of x squared minus 9 over <coughs> 3, the same thing that's happening to it right now at the, as we speak. Because oh, okay. tangent is opposite over adjacent. OK, and then times secant theta, which is x over 3. Um, and that's all over 2 plus 1 half natural log, absolute value. <laughs> this is funny. Oh. <laughs> Secant theta, which is x over 3, plus the square root of x squared minus 9 over 3, close, close absolute brackets. value, plus close C. parentheses, close brackets, close. plus C. That's it. That's all you had to do. <laughs> I can't wait to do this over. <laughs> Actually, this is one of the, um, I'm sorry, I semi apologize. This is one of the not so good ones. It doesn't always end up this bad. How about we could solve for um, theta the way that we're seeing for tangent? Okay. Like, why did we have to use a triangle? Because you, um, you don't have theta explicitly, so you don't need to do the inverse. Straight function. You can do that. It was a different issue. Like you end up with something different. And the other one we ended up with just things. So then we had to do the And this one we ended up with trick function. Have a good day. See you. Do that so easy. I wake up and do that problem for breakfast. Perfect.